I am Jaakko Juntunen from Opteni and I will give you a demonstration on a design of 60 GHz antenna using AWR Axiom software and Opteni lab together. The overview of the presentation is as follows. First, we discuss pre-tuning the antenna geometry using so-called bandwidth potential analysis in OptaniLab. Then we look at the microstrip matching circuit synthesis in OptaniLab, and then using the link to AWR, we bring the design into AWR and perform extraction in Axiom. And then we straightforwardly can compose the whole model, including the matching circuit, the antenna, and whatever else we might have in the neighborhood of the antenna, influencing the antenna performance. Finally, we will uh, analyze the radiation efficiency, gain, polarization, and radiation pattern of the uh, final antenna. The starting point uh, for our design is taken from a public domain reference, which is uh, essentially a patch antenna, which has been uh, designed to cover very wide frequency range, around 60 gigahertz. So there is an unlicensed band between 57 and 64 gigahertz, and this is our target for this uh, presentation. Uh, the reference design uh, is carried out on a very thick substrate. Instead, we choose a more appropriate thin substrate of 5 mils thickness. And because the antenna is fed from below, we must use a coplanar waveguide to feed the antenna. And so considering the pre-tuning the antenna, so uh, in this picture we can see what is the say the initial geometry. We have a parameter d which characterizes the distance of the antenna from the microstrip ground plane. Such a problem is easy to parameterize in Axiom using the shape modifiers and we can study a couple of different parameter values d. So here we have the, the result the S11 versus the parameter d and we see that indeed it influences quite a bit the antenna performance. So it is critical to design a proper distance of the antenna from the microstrip ground. However, the S11 curves, they do not reveal how much bandwidth would be available from this antenna if we apply a simple matching network. To analyze the, the real available bandwidth, OptaniLab has so-called bandwidth potential analysis, which optimizes for the maximum symmetric bandwidth for every frequency point. And behind the schemes, it's using two ideal uh, reactive components. And therefore, the bandwidth potential is a much more relevant characterization of the bandwidth of the antenna. If we are successful with bandwidth potential analysis, we know in advance that it will be an easy matching task. So if we take the S parameters where we sweep the parameter D into OptaniLab and carry out the bandwidth potential analysis, we get the uh, following set of curves. And we see that uh, for low values of D, we have a higher frequency uh, characteristic of the antenna, but when D is larger, at about 1.7, then our center frequency is about the target frequency, uh, 60 gigahertz. Unfortunately, with this antenna design, the available bandwidth is only about 3.5 gigahertz, while our target is 7 gigahertz. This means we have to uh, carry out the redesign to enhance the available bandwidth. And now I will switch over to the Axiom software and AWR design environment and, and consider the, the redesigned antenna. So 
in, in practice we parameterized the antenna structure, some key parameters, key dimensions, the patch width and length, and the slot width, and uh, a couple of other dimensions. And, and pretty soon we uh, came up with a design that provides inherent 10 dB matching for the target band, it's a 57 to 64 gigahertz. Now it remains to bring this uh, data into uh, OptaniLab, so we introduce output file and choose the appropriate document, click OK, simulate once, and now we have stored the S parameters. And in OptaniLab now, I'm reading in the impedance file that was just uh, generated, and here we have the impedance date. And so this is now represents the, the redesign, and now we carry out the bandwidth potential analysis. We set the reference matching level at 10 decibels and optimize for the symmetric bandwidth. So now OptaniLab is analyzing frequency by frequency, maximizing the symmetric bandwidth around each frequency point. And so this analysis takes a, a few moments, after which we can confirm if our available, what is the, the actually available bandwidth for the design frequency and if it's sufficient for our purposes. So here we see that indeed the, the best kind of, we could say, sweet spot for, for this antenna is exactly at 60.5 gigahertz, which is in the middle of our band. And in fact, more than 10 gigahertz bandwidth is available. Well, this antenna is inherently already matched to the target frequency, but in addition to that, we can design, decide to design also a stop band. So suppose we have a transmitter at 77 gigahertz and we want to block that frequency out. So when we carry out the matching circuit analysis itself, so we can, wh when we introduce bands, so we can add both uh, pass bands and stop bands. So let me first, we, we know that we have enough bandwidth so we can design for one plus minus one gigahertz extra. So we, we go for 56 to 65 gigahertz, a, a total of nine, nine gigahertz band. And then we add a stop band around 77, so we go from 76 to uh, 78 gigahertz. And then under the topology tab, we select to use microstrip lines. And we parameterize using the substrate parameters. And uh, this is a low loss material. And then click OK. We still set limits for the microstrip line width <coughs> and length such that we get reasonable results from the synthesis. Under the microstrip match options, we can choose if we have uh, short or open stubs or both. In this case, let us choose open uh, stubs. From the topology tab, we can now choose the number of components. So we can try with, for example, four microstrip components. And then I click OK. And now OptaniLab is carrying out the synthesis using microstrip lines for the selected substrate and for the given targets. And so in this case, it takes about maybe 20 seconds there are lots of different topologies that are uh, synthesized. And so it turns out that we get uh, reasonably good results using four components. So if we take the uh, layout view of the circuit, so we see that, for example, the circuit number four uh, looks promising. And now we can 
transfer this circuit directly into uh, microwave office by one click. So let me just rename this as let's say 60 gigahertz and I <coughs> right click the, the circuit view and transfer the circuit over to microwave office. And now when we go back to microwave office this design is now found uh, under the schematics. So this was uh, just transferred over from OptaniLab. Now we can apply the, the script to create the stack up and basically all we need is to define a thick metal model because our dimensions are uh, really uh, small in this design compared to the line thickness. So we add extraction and we have the extraction document here. And so now we have a full Axiom model that we can now use in the context. And so when we analyze this <coughs> design further and bring the matching circuit together with the antenna itself, we see that there is not very much interaction between the antenna and the matching circuit itself. When we analyze the radiation uh, properties of the uh, antenna, we see that there is actually a conflict. So there is much higher radiation at the design stop band than the, the power that is delivered to the antenna itself. But this simply means that the matching circuit itself is radiating at the stop band. So we, we just cover it and using Axiom again, by quick experimentation, we find out that, for example, this kind of covering does not disturb much the antenna performance while it prevents the radiation at stop band. And so with the covered matching circuit, we now see only about 3% radiation at stop band. And while the S11 is, is now better than almost 13 decibels over the band of interest. And so finally, we analyze the radiation properties of, of this antenna. Uh, we use the power info measurement and we can calculate that the radiation efficiency is around 75 to 78 percent. However, in axiom, part of the, the energy is, is um, lost in surface waves, but we can easily calculate the amount how much uh, energy is lost there by comparing with a lossless model. And so the corrected radiation efficiency is around 90 percent. Uh, adding surface roughness model into our axiom simulation, we see that actually the losses are increasing quite rapidly. And so there is about 15, 17 percent additional loss. So we can conclude that the, the realistic radiation efficiency is probably around 70 percent. And so we can then calculate the radiation patterns, uh, analyze the, the, we see clearly three distinct lobes, and we can analyze what is the polarization and what is the, for example, 1 dB beam width for each of the lobes. And we see that there are uh, three lobes, one uh, linear pol polarization and, and two uh, circularly polarized lobes. And so by proper weighting, so if we use this antenna in an array, we can generate the desired, any desired polarization more or less. So to conclude, so we have carried out uh, an mm millimeter wave antenna design uh, and matching using Axiom and OptaniLab together, applied bandwidth potential for uh, pre-characterization of, of antenna candidates, uh, synthesized matching circuit for passband and stopband, carried that data over to uh, microwave office in one click using that model through Axiom extraction composing a complete model and then finally uh, analyzing the, the radiation properties and antenna characteristics uh, in microwave office. So this concludes
my brief presentation of this design. Thank you.